So at this point, say that we have a series and we want to know whether the series converges or not. We have a few tools at our disposal. I mean, generically, if the series is a P-series or the series is geometric, we can answer that just by looking at the terms and we don't have to do anything special. Occasionally, if we have a telescoping series, we might be able to just look at the partial sums, but that's unusual. Looking at partial sums is usually not very helpful. In terms of more generic, ways of investigating this question. Well, we have the nth term test. The nth term test is pretty severely limited. It can sometimes show divergence. Remember what the nth term test says? The nth term test says you take the limit as n goes to infinity of these terms. And if this is not zero, we've got a divergent series. Um, the great limitation of the nth term test is that if the limit is equal to zero, we don't get any data. If the limit is equal to zero, it doesn't tell us the series converges. It tells us that the test fails. And we've now seen an example. We know that the harmonic series diverges, even though the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n is zero. So the limit equaling zero can't tell us that the series converges. In that sense, the x term test is very limited. And We've got the integral test. And the integral test um, can tell us that a series converges, or it can tell us that a series diverges. But in most situations, the integral test is a hard to use and kind of specialized tool. I mean, first of all, the integral test fails if we have any factorials. That might not seem like a big deal, but it's a catastrophe. Um, um, the most important applications of this series stuff involve series with factorial.
Oreos in them. Um, the integral test requires that all the terms be positive. And then on a practical level, the integral test requires that you be able to take the integral. And you know, it's very easy to create series. The sign of one over n divided by n. Um, let's put a plus one up there. This series is always positive. It's defined by a continuous function, but on a practical level, good luck trying to integrate this thing. You're not going to be able to do it. In this section, we're going to introduce two more tests. And one of these tests I like, and the other I don't like. And that's like children obediently eating their vegetables before dessert. Let's just knock out the test that I don't like today. This is the comparison test. And saying that I don't, that I like, or that I don't like a test might seem kind of bizarre. Um, the comparison test is, in my opinion, the hardest to use. Convergence and divergence test that we're going to see in chapter 10. It's, in particular, it's extremely fiddly, Require it requires you to have some degree of intuition about convergence or divergence that you might not have. Well, let's get into the test before I, I before I start uh, giving frank opinions on it. So the comparison test as one of the restrictions that the integral test has, which is that the terms of the series we're looking at have to be positive. And the, uh, the test we'll look at on Thursday has the same restriction, but then we'll start getting to tests that don't have restrictions like that. And the comparison test, I mean, it's very intuitive to say, I'll give it that. Whatever my other, um, problems with this test are, it's extremely intuitive. And the comparison test is based on the idea that if something is smaller than a finite number, it's finite. And if something's bigger than infinity, then it's infinite. Suppose these terms A sub N are smaller than some other terms, B sub N. And suppose that the series of these larger terms converges. Well, this is finite. 
So this is smaller than a finite thing. So as I said, this is just the intuition that if something is smaller than a finite quantity, it is itself finite. And going the other way, what if these terms are bigger than B sub n? And the series of B sub n terms diverges. Well, the general intuition is that if something diverges, it's infinitely large. I mean, it can break down occasionally. Grandy's series diverges. I wouldn't say it gets infinitely big, but our general intuition is that divergence means infinity. Yeah. So this is the statement that, well, if the sum of the B's is infinite and the A's are bigger than the B's, then the sum of the A's is also infinite. Being bigger than infinity, makes you infinite. So that is the comparison test. And the great issue with the comparison test in practice is, first of all, I mean, well, first of all, nothing. What's the, what are these B sub n's? Where is this other series coming from? And the answer to that question is that you have to invent the B sub n's. You have to create this convergent series or this divergent series. Yes. And doing that can be, as I say, an extremely fiddly process. And it also requires you to be going in with some kind of intuition. Because this series you're trying to create, these B sub N, should they be bigger than the series you're looking at? Or should they be smaller than the series you're looking at? And the answer is that it depends. If you're trying to show that a series converges, you need to create these B sub n's so that they converge. But if you're trying to show that a series diverges, you need to create these B sub n's so that they diverge. And it's a very non-trivial thing to do. Like, I mean, I, I struggle with this. I, like if, if like you just gave me a random homework assignment from this section and told me to get on it, I wouldn't be able to just instantly do most of them. They really do require to be messed around with and worked with and fiddled with. But that show what us, it can't all be negativity. That show what a successful application of the comparison test looks like. 
let's look at the sum from let's see from one to infinity of five divided by five n minus one. And for some, but not all of these tests, we really need to go into the problem with some idea of what we're going to show. So it's kind of circular. I'm going to try to decide just sort of intuitively, whether I think this series converges or diverges. And then once I have that intuition, I'm going to try to use the comparison test to formalize the intuition. And my intuition I think this series probably diverges. Now, where does that intuition come from? Is it really intuition or am I just cheating because I'm going into the class having already done the examples. Well, this intuition is coming from the idea that when that um, polynomials act like their leading term, essentially. So, This is something you've at least theoretically seen in before, but let's remind ourselves. If say you have a polynomial, two x squared minus x plus three, the leading term of this polynomial is two x squared, and if you just look at these initially, they seem pretty different. But you see as X gets large, this polynomial just starts to look like it's leading term. If we compare this polynomial and we compare this leading term, it's very hard to see the difference between them. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, well, 5n minus 1 is a polynomial. So I think 5n minus 1 should basically act like its leading term. I think that minus 1 shouldn't be making much of a difference in the long run. And 5 over 5n would be the harmonic series, 5 over 5n diverges. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, well, 5n minus 1, I mean, when n is big, when, remember, n is getting very big, n is going up to infinity. So when n is big, when n is a bialin or n is a trailin, 5n minus 1 is basically acting like 5n. 
and five over five and diverges. Therefore, my intuition is that this series probably diverges. So that's my intuition, but it's not a formal proof. It's just me looking at that expression and saying, I reckon it's probably a divergent series. The challenge is to show that this is divergent using the um, comparison test. And the reason that we went to this trouble, the reason we tried to get this intuition about what this series is doing, well, we didn't really have a choice because if we're going to use the comparison test, there are two things we could be doing. We could try to show that five over five n minus one is a smaller than something that converges. And if we showed that, we would know that five over five and minus one converges. Or we're trying to show that five over five and minus one is bigger than a divergent series. If five over five and minus one is bigger than a divergent series, five over five and minus one diverges. So if we're going to be using the comparison test, we're either trying to find a bigger series or a smaller series. And the point of form dilating the intuition that we tried to form the lake on this frame is to answer the question, well, which of these are we going for? And because our intuition is that this series probably diverges, we're going for that second. And we can formulate a goal. Find a divergent series. That is a smaller than five over five n minus one. If we can find a divergent series that's smaller than five over five n minus one, then According to the comparison test, that gives us divergence of the series. So is our goal here clear? And the question then becomes, okay, well, how are how are we doing this? We want 
five over five n minus one to be bigger than something that diverges. So we're not going to just start guessing stuff. That would be a disaster. What we're going to do is we're going to take this fraction, take this five over five n minus one, and we're going to ask, can we do something to this fraction that will shrink it? And if we want to shrink a fraction, we have the options to either shrink the top, the numerator, or to increase the bottom. And to clarify this with numbers, if we have if we have two thirds and we decrease two to one, that's going to cause the fraction to shrink. Or if we have two thirds and we increase three to four. That's going to cause the fraction to shrink. And the issue here, well, N issue, one of the reasons that I've said that this comparison test is fiddly is that there are a bunch of ways we can shrink the top. There are a bunch of ways we can increase the bottom, but but our goal is to get a series that we know diverges. Like increasing the bottom of this fraction is the easiest thing in the world. We can increase that 5n to 12n. We can add an exponential expression. There's an infinite number of things we can do to shrink this fraction, but we have a very specific goal. We need to get the divergent series. So we're not just trying to shrink this, we're trying to shrink it in a way that's useful to us. And in this case, I won't say the answer is simple because I don't think there's anything simple about this stuff when you first see it, but it's, it can be done with a single step. We don't have to do a lot of messing around. If, I mean, currently we've got subtraction in the bottom of that fraction. If we got rid of subtraction, it will cause the bottom to grow. 5n is bigger than 5n minus 1. So this is a true state. And the harmonic series diverges, so we are bigger than something that diverges. So the series that we're studying diverges. And this is the idea behind um, 
the comparison test. Don't have a huge amount of time left, but let's look at a fiddlier example. And I mean, this is a good example. I've, I've used the word fiddly. Five over five and plus seven. I mean, I would bet anything that this series diverges. It's so similar to the example we just did. I would bet almost anything that, you know, when N is a trillion and we've got five trillion in the denominator, I would bet anything that that plus seven or that minus one aren't going to have a real impact. I really think that this diverges. But Suddenly, things become harder if we try to show this because we can no longer just get rid of the seven. If we get rid of the seven, that's going to take us in the wrong direction. If we get rid of the seven, well, we're going to make our series bigger. And now the limit, the comparison test is not having us anything because we're being smaller than an infinite quantity does not tell you anything according to the comparison test. One over N, that sum is infinity, where less than or equal to infinity. So we could be finite, we could be infinite, we don't get any information here. So this is the kind of thing where you can um, spend so much time just trying different things until something works. If we are trying to make a um, smaller fraction, our options are shrink the top or increase the bottom. Well, shrinking that five doesn't really seem helpful. I mean, we could replace that five with a four, but, but that's not really doing anything. So we probably want to increase the bottom. And there are mo there's more than one way to do this. But one thing, just looking at this and thinking, we've got a plus seven. If we wanted to increase the bottom, we could have a plus seven N. I mean, N is big, remember, so like, but n is a hundred, n is a billion, n is a trillion, n is going to infinity. So I mean, five n plus seven is certainly less than five n plus seven multiplied by a large number. So 5n plus 7n is bigger than 5n plus 7, 
we have increased the denominator, so we've shrunk the fraction. Let's do. And we now have that five over five n plus seven is bigger than five over twelve n. Five over twelve n is five twelfths times one over n. One over n is harmonic. So it diverges. A constant in this case, five twelfths times a divergent series of diverges. And this then diverges. So we're bigger than a divergent series. And we diverge. And again, I mean, the argument, I just kind of, I don't know how natural or how easy you find this. I certainly recognize that it's easy for me to say, I've taught this class my Ten times already. I've done a lot of examples like this, but I don't think it is obvious. I think that going from here to here is actually an extremely tricky bit of reasoning when you first see it. And the reason that I say I don't really like the comparison test is that it requires students to make all these sort of tricksy arguments. But I also think the comparison test is kind of obscuring the actual argument. I mean, we made an argument here that a series probably diverges because it looks like a divergent series. And going through all the trouble of trying to find a smaller divergent series is really missing the point. It looks like something that diverges, so it probably diverges. Tomorrow, we'll look at um, another comparison test, the limit comparison test, that I think is a lot more intuitive, that allows us to kind of get this argument. It looks divergent, so it diverges. It looks convergent, so it converges without all the fiddly messing around with numerators and denominators. And I will see you then, see you Thursday.